Today is November the 8th. Today we'll see the story of Jezebel and her daughter, Athaliah. In reading through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read 2 Kings chapters 9 through 11. Now, yesterday, we focused on the prophets, or the text focused on the prophets. Today, the focus shifts back to the kings of Judah and Israel. Elisha the prophet calls a younger prophet. He gives them a flask of oil. He says, go to Jehu, who is the general of the army, and anoint him as king over Israel. Well, the prophet goes, he finds Jehu, he anoints him as king, and he gives him God's message. God says, you'll be king over Israel. Kill the family of King Ahab, of uh, the former King Ahab. This would have been King Jehoram, all of his brothers, all of his uncles, and all of his children. Well, in the latter part of chapter 9, uh, Jehu does that. But in verse 27, when King Ahaziah of Judah saw what was happening, he fled along the road to Bethagan. Jehu rode after him, shouting, Shoot him too. And they killed him. He died in Megiddo, which is in Israelite territory. Now, Jehu returns to Samaria and he finds Jezebel, who's identified as the queen mother. Now, if you remember, at the time that Ahab died, Jezebel really ruled. She ruled through two of her sons. First, I believe it was uh, Joash. Then it was Jehoram. Um, Jehu has now killed both of them. He has Jezebel killed as well. He says, who is on the Lord's side? And uh, uh, three eunuchs peek out of the window and uh, Jehu says, throw her out. And he threw out the window and she died there. In chapter 10, uh, Jehu kills the rest of Ahab's family. At the end of chapter 10, he kills the priests of Baal. He went on a killing spree and uh, did far beyond what God had asked him to do, which was to terminate the dynasty of uh, Ahab, uh, the dynasty of Omri, and uh, begin his own dynasty. And uh, Jehu just went a little bit farther than God had commanded. Now, this leaves in chapter 11, Queen Athaliah, who was the mother of King Ahaziah of Judah, as queen mother over Judah. Jezebel had served as queen mother. And actually, what we find in chapter 8, verse 26, that Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem just for one year. His mother was Athaliah, a granddaughter of King Omri of Israel. That would make her Ahab's daughter. That makes her Jezebel's daughter. Athaliah, true to her mother's nature, decided, mm, I think I'll rule. And so she kills all of Ahaziah's brothers, and then she kills all of his sons, her own sons, to establish herself as the queen over Judah. But she had a sister, also a daughter of Jezebel, who apparently didn't, uh, she saw what was happening with Athaliah. She kept the youngest of 
uh, Ahaziah's sons. His name was Joash, only one year old, a toddler. She stole him away. She hid him, and she hid him in the temple where Athaliah would never go. She worshiped Baal, not God. So Joash grows in the temple, and chapter 11 tells how the high priest Jehoiada takes Joash when he's seven years old, anoints him as king over Judah at seven years, has Queen Athaliah killed just like her mother, and uh, Joash rules instead. Now, from seven years old until the time that Joash was truly able to rule, frankly, it was Jehoiada who was calling the shots. And there were great religious reforms that took place during this time. But as we'll see next week in chapter 12, when Joash begins to rule, he continues the religious reforms that Jehoiada, his guardian and mentor, had begun. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll look at the last of the songs of ascent.